the benefits of wildlife friendly gardening it's about you living alongside and enjoying nature to its max by sharing that space with wildlife. There's a great pleasure to be had from that. But there's also a real sustainable benefits to gardening with wildlife. I mean, a simple example would be having frogs in a the pond. They're gonna keep down your slug and snail population. If you encourage them into your garden, that's gonna help reduce the slugs and enable you to have better crops. So a lot of the food that we're growing needs to be pollinated. So if you think about all your fruits, your raspberries, your currants, things like grapes or hops, all need pollination. Uh, and we know that our bee and moths and butterflies need pollen to survive as well. So there's like that symbiotic relationship really. But if we're covering everything up or we're using pesticides to prevent insects coming in and, and eating at those crops, we're going to be preventing the pollination. So the more wildlife we can bring in, the more fruit, the more yield you're going to be getting. There's a number of things you need to think about when you're planning a new space. You've got to think about where you're getting the water from, uh, where you're going to compost, and where you're going to put those in your garden, the proximity of those to your fruit and veg that you're growing. You need to be thinking about how you're going to use that space. Uh, think about how big plants get. So you might buy some raspberry canes that are about this big when you pick them up in February, but they'll end up six foot tall, two foot across, and will take up quite a bit of room and for the long season. So it's really helpful if you just do a sketch, uh, ideally to scale, and you could pace that out. One pace is about one meter, but draw that out and draw out your beds and where you're going to put those different fruit and veg that you want to grow. The other thing to think about when you're planning is your soil and the type of soil that you've got because that will have a, an impact on what you can grow or how successfully you can grow certain produce. And also the sun. What's the sun doing on your garden? Get your compass off your phone and have a look at the way the sun travels around your garden. So raspberries, for example, don't mind a bit of shade, but there's other um, you know, fruit, veg, maybe daily as you might be growing or croissants that really like a lot of sunshine. So that will help you plan out that space so that you can make the most of it really and not feel too overwhelmed and, and yeah, get some quick wins. So in terms of accessibility, regardless of your needs, you need to be able to move freely and comfortably through your plot. So there's nothing worse than having pathways between your beds that are too small. And when you're kneeling down to do the weeding, you're catching your knee on, on it or, or the bed behind, or you're tripping over somebody else's fruit and veg that they're growing. So have paths much more generous than you would maybe think that you need. The second thing to think about is wheelbarrow access and access to that compost area. So give yourself probably 90 centimetres to 1.2 metre path if you can to get through and around your plot. Think about how you're going to grow. Are you going to grow in raised beds, which is a really great way to get started and defining an area. And then if you're having a bad year or you're far too busy, you can cover it in a green mulch. You could put it in uh, some cardboard or membrane to keep the weeds down and maybe deal with that the year later if you're not able to get there that year. Raised beds you can make quite high, uh, although you'll need to put more soil in. They can be really good for access if you've got physical access needs. Uh, we can, you know, we've made beds that are totally wheelchair accessible or beds that you can move up alongside and people can get into and garden into. But again, think about the size and the space around those beds. That's really, really important. Mm -hmm.